All right, guys, it's like three o'clock in the morning. I got my coffee. We're gonna head out on a little road trip. Hey, we made it. Yeah. You gonna tell everybody what we're doing here? Well, I'm you just standing a, by looking. You bought a new trailer and I'm hauling it home for you. Oh, I did? <laughs> oh, well, okay. So uh, we got, uh, don't tell, don't so we can say this is a Hoover approved trailer for hauling the 120 behind the dump truck. Uh, mostly. Get that mostly. on video. Yeah, mostly. Mostly. We, so. we gotta get, we got portable scale stuff. <laughs> Hey, it all comes to weight distribution and hitch and balance and weather conditions and atmosphere, and all that good stuff. <laughs> Tie down strap. But no, no, this was a, hey, since this is in your area, could you go look at it? And I said, yeah, sure. The owner's like, you got your money's worth out of this inspection because somebody showed up in full uniform. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we're going to yeah, try. That, that was always interesting. <laughs> hey, I'm just going to come do the pre inspection, pre buy. What? We're going to get her loaded up on the. Hopefully get her loaded up on the trailer here to get her home. It's the 1996 Trail King. It's in really good shape for her age. It comes with the log boasters. I'm hoping it'll make just a good all-around spare trailer. So it does look pretty clean for a 96, don't it? Yeah. Really I, clean. I surprised. I surprised. Usually you get a lot of like real bad looking under under it, but it works. Always wheeling and dealing. <laughs> yeah, they got that lined up there pretty good. Almost like they know what they're doing. All right, here's a little tip. See this Indiana no, this no expiry? Doesn't mean that you don't have to renew your registration. It just means they won't issue a new sticker. You still have to renew it. So, if you're ever in Indiana running around, you gotta still renew your registration every year. I catch that a lot. Still liking your speed binders? Oh my God. Absolutely. I've been trying to 
sell them to other people when I can. All right, so we're gonna watch his, his load securement technique here. We'll... Hey, fit me. Less wear and tear. Self-proclaimed I, I Now, wait a minute. I, I don't proclaim nothing. I'm just trying to. I was trying to hook it down there so it takes the suspension out of it so the chain will stay tight with the balance, you see? So yeah. whenever you don't find me going down the road. Yeah. So when it loosens up, it. <laughs> no. Well. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I'll on that rub rail that's perfectly legal going to all the Well, let's, let's inspect it for any cracks, breaks. Nope, looks pretty good. Now we're going to get our speed binder action going. Look how easy that is. So, a good goofy fact is Mr. Mike here is going to go four corners, which you can do that because there was some discussion a few years ago, something like this. Do you go by the length? So, let's say if this was 30 feet, you know, not blocked or braced, you'd need two in the first 10, 20 and 30. But they have came through and said, basically, if the vehicle or the trailer is greater than 10,000 and one GVWR they're going to consider it uh, basically falling into the heavy machinery the four corners so he's going to be just fine going going four corners on this because of the new way so if you're ever loading equipment like this on equipment you can do four corners just like you would the dozers the front end loaders, but that being articulated, you gotta have something to prevent the articulation. So you usually see two in the two in the rear, two in the front, one and one, or the lock to prevent articulation, and then something on the bucket. So just your boring little DOT information. Look at that. I, I'm, he has come so far. He's doing good. Done, yeah. He's doing good. Still got yeah, 50. Yeah, I don't. Oh, I don't know. Is he, is he over? Uh, it'll be. Yeah. Look at that. Good and tight. Oh, that's impressive. That is impressive. Got a little bit of seepage air, little bit, but something that if it starts to get a lot of excess stripping, that's something, something need to look at. So stuff like that for the length, it's not too long, so it only needs the one, and then they're not heavy enough, so you're not going to need the two. So those are roughly four foot. So anything greater than four foot in the weight and all that, but nope. Wiring looks in good shape. A little bit of dirt. I'm sure he'll have man behind the scenes clean it off and do all that. We'll see if he does it. Yeah, that ain't gonna go nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> we had him puzzled for a minute. Like, what the heck are you talking about? Word, right? Yeah, that, that ain't gonna go nowhere. All right, guys, we got the trailer loaded and we are heading back south. We got about three hours of travel time to get back to uh, 
dirty, but all in all, pretty happy with the trailer. I think it's gonna fit the build pretty good. The price I paid for it. The trailer is actually in really good shape, and I like that it has the log, uh, log posters on it, log stakes. May have to do a little bit of work on the back of it to make it easier to load for some stuff, but uh, time will tell on that. The first obstacle I've got to overcome is we're gonna have to do a little bit of work on the C8500 to uh, make it hitch up and be compatible with this. So, I'm not sure when we get around to that. It's still pretty busy right now, but uh, eventually we'll get her all hitched up and working and see what happens. So we're going to head on into Derby. I'll find some time to uh, make these two together. We'll jump back in here and make her happen. All right, guys, it's been about two weeks since I picked up that pill hitch trailer. It's just been busy. Haven't had much time to do anything with it. But uh, Got home a little bit early today and thought we would uh, tackle a few projects we need to get out of the way to make it work. So, this truck here, I reworked the back end of it whenever I uh, bought it. And it had a heavy duty panel on it. I took it off, put the light duty panel on, and I discontinued all the air lines. So what we need to do at this point is undo some of the stuff I did earlier. So, I want to keep this panel hitch on here uh because i still want to be able to pull that small corn pro trailer from time to time so i've done some measuring and figuring and i can mount my heavy duty piddle pintle uh up there above it so that's kind of my uh kind of my plan on that i've got it laid out i've got my hole center punched and i uh, got my mag drill set up we're getting ready to punch a hole in there this is actually a typhoon drill i bought this thing cheapo depot off ebay it is not like a cadillac it's not nice it don't have a lot of functions a lot of features but for a guy that's going to use one occasionally, uh, I don't have no complaints. It's worked uh, worked pretty good for me. So this is actually the hitch that came off the back of this truck when I bought it. I still got it. So we're going to uh, put it back on there. Like I said, it's going to sit right above that other one. So first things first, let's drill a few holes, get the hitch mounted. Uh, once we get that figured out, we're going to uh, have to figure out some uh, plumbing for all the air brakes. But uh, I've already checked back behind there. We shouldn't miss all the electrical connections. So let's drill home. We always call these slugger bits because after you get done drilling, you gotta pull a slug. Let's see if I can get it out of there. Oh, come on. Pull a slug out of the end of there. Pull this back. a good one there's the slug that comes out it just cuts around the edges and leaves the center which is uh really nice leaves a good hole one down three to go
All right, so voila, just like that, we should have, notice I said should, should have four perfectly placed holes and a whole bunch of uh, metal shavings. Man, that thing, like I said, that thing and them slugger bits is the ticket for stuff like this. So let me set you guys down over here because uh, this hitch is pretty heavy and we'll see if all of our uh, holes line up. All right, here we go. Put a bolt in that hole and put the bolt in that hole. Come on, baby. Go do the holes. Boy, we got a chance. There's that one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's three of them, man. We're going to get the fourth one. <laughs> Hot dog. Now, here's the real trick. I don't think that's going to interfere with this at all. By golly, that might just work don't know how well you guys can see up there we're down on the back side we're gonna get a nut Let's see if i can do this out dropping oh well nope, fail it's got a hard to do oh my goodness we're getting bombed get a nut or a lock washer hey <laughs> one for three started on all these and then we'll get the old impact wrench out and uh, tighten her down. All right, let me see if I can find all the parts I lost. Here's one here. Get it on there. Whoop. Okay. And we got one left. Let me get back here. There we go. All right, let's tighten them down. Alright guys, we got our hitch all bolted up. That uh, looks pretty snazzy. We got the miniature one. We got the full size one. Everything seems to work on it pretty good. Well, I'll say that. Now it's not going to work. Oh, I got to push it over. Safety mechanism. It works. It's just hard to do with one hand. Trust me. So, here's my next dilemma. Is I got to mount these glad hands in here somewhere. This is the air coupling system for the air brakes. I really wanted them to put them up in here where they were protected. But because of the angle of the, how they have to lock, I just cannot, I just can't get it figured out quite, uh, quite how I was gonna like it. So my next option is, is to mount them as high as possible. So I drilled these two holes right here. I think I'm gonna weld these nipples off in these holes like this, trying to make it as rigid as possible. And then this will thread onto that and this bed will miss it when it dumps. Oh, there's a chance that something may come rolling out of that bed one day, hit one of these and break it off. If that happens, it's not the end of the world. It's just really a pain in the butt. If it happens repeatedly, I might have to look at building some sort of little protective case around it to uh, get them to bounce off. But uh, after staring at this thing for the last half an hour, to be honest with you, it's the best option I've come up with so far. So. Uh, I'm tired of talking about it and looking at it. We're gonna, we're just gonna do it. So let's weld this thing off.
Well, there they are, guys. I'll be honest with you, I am not super, super thrilled about the placement of those. I think it'll be fine. I'm probably just overthinking it. It's, they're actually tucked in there. Probably a good six, eight inches. And most of it's gonna fall out of the bed. It's gonna hit down in here somewhere. You can almost kind of see the line right there. Hindsight being 2020, I think I could have put them up here and put them flat. So instead of trying to bring them down like this, brought them in like this, but uh, kind of committed to this route. So kind of gonna go with it is uh, kind of what I'm thinking. So I'm gonna crawl underneath and we'll get the plumbing finished up on the other side of there. Cause right now they go nowhere. All right, guys, it's starting to get dark outside. And before it gets too dark, I want to go get the trailer and bring it up here so I can make sure everything mates up the way it's supposed to be. So uh, we're going to put a pause on this for just a second. Ooh, I better get my phone out of there. That would not be good. I'll be looking for that later. Put a pause on this for just a second, and we're going to go down to the lot, grab the trailer, and bring it up here to the shop. Too uh, shabby for the first hit there. I realized one thing I was gonna do and forgot is I need to bring my impact down here. I was gonna raise this ring up so this track trailer would ride a little bit more level. But guess what? I forgot to shop. You guessed her. The impact. So oh well, we'll do that whenever we get back up there. But uh, for now, let's get this thing in the house before she gets too dark. This thing has. Uh, this thing does not have parking chambers on it, so if it don't have any air on it, it'll roll. It don't have any air on it, so it should be able to roll to the house and uh, get by. So off we go. All right, quick little three trip. Everything looks pretty good. I want to get to the uh, house pretty quick because uh, don't have lights on this thing. It's getting kind of dark. So let's see if she rolls. Oh, she's a moving. She's a moving. Well, there she is. We made it. That wasn't uh, too horrible. Definitely need to do a little adjusting on her, but she'll be good. So I'm now, these are not marked. So I got to figure out which one goes in which place. Does that make sense? So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hook, they got just regular air hose fittings on these, which trained officer Hoover is not BOT approved. So I'm just going to hook the air hose up to it. If I hit the air hose up to this one and it sets the brakes, then we know it's the, uh, service slash emergency and if it don't well then we know it's the other side so let's see what happens
for. Okay, so I have confirmed this is the red service line that uh, we need to hook up to this one right here. See, I told you guys that was close. That is close, isn't it? That is almost too close. <sighs> I may end up changing that. I don't know if I like that or not. But um, anyways, for now, we're going to continue on with this project. So whenever I say red line, let me go around here to the other side of the truck and I'll show you what I mean. So this is all existing plumbing on the truck. I just capped them off back here, but I've got a red line. And then down here, see my fancy cap job? I got a blue line. So this line here, it's gonna be hard to film, but this line here is gonna connect to that far glad hand over there. This line here is gonna connect to this one. So let me kind of get them roughed in, and then I'll uh, show you my connections. All right, hopefully you guys can see up there, but this here is the red one. I know you guys can't tell it goes to the red line. And then that one there is the blue one, which is this side over here. So I believe those few connections there pretty much makes the truck side of this complete. All right, guys, unfortunately, it's getting dark. It's getting late. This is going to have to bleed over into another afternoon. Hopefully tomorrow I can get in here a little bit early again and get this uh, knocked out finished up. But I got the emergency side hooked up and we can get out. I think I'm, I'm getting more and more comfortable with the placement of these. This clearance issue here will fix itself whenever I adjust that. I'll explain more about that tomorrow, but for now, I'm tired. Kids always just got home. We're going to call today. We'll catch you guys tomorrow afternoon. All right, guys, it's a new day on the trailer project, and I've got all kinds of new ideas. So whenever I left you last night, I was telling you how I wasn't really excited about these things sticking out here. And... Uh, not being protected and the clearance between here and here is really tight clearance between here and here is really tight so after sleeping on it i decided i'm going to change it because i just ain't happy with it and this is what i come up with and i'm actually uh kind of liking where this is going to go i just hope it ends up where i think it's going to end up at but i'm going to take these off and put 90s on and put these on here like this and then the one going to the trailer will have a 90 on it as well uh when the bed dumps they will almost be back behind there so they should be protected very well and they shouldn't be sticking out here like this hopefully and the hole in the glad hand be facing away from whatever material is coming out of the truck so i'm feeling a lot better about that let's see how it looks after it's all hooked up but uh starting off today we're gonna go backwards to go forward so let's do it
All right, guys, there it is. I am feeling a lot better about that setup. I had to make a little bit of a change on the fly. I had to put these a little bit of an angle because I couldn't get this to clear that plate. It was just too close. But I think I like that even better. These should be very well protected. The bed, whenever it comes down, it covers about that much of it. So the chances of them getting hit, uh, I don't want to say the chances of them getting hit's not there. But it's slim to that. It's greatly, greatly reduced over what it was before. I need to get some blanks or some dummy covers to put on those so whenever they're not in use, uh, no dirt and stuff gets in them. But uh, I feel a lot better about them. I did put a tack weld on them on either side. I just wanted to make sure I maintain that angles. I didn't want it to, I didn't want to get it too tight where I uh, mess up the threads, but I still want to maintain that angle. So I am liking that. I'm feeling much better about that. All right, I'm back. Sorry, I got a phone call. But uh, next on the list is we got to get the wiring to go in there. This here had, where did it go? Where'd it go? Here it is. It had this plug here, which is a seven round. This is what most semis have. I actually run the seven spade on this truck. So the panel hitch trailer will go back and forth between this truck and my pickup truck. So we're going to convert this one over to that because, well, I don't have any other trucks to pull this except for this one. And I want this one to stay the same as the other one. You get the point. So I didn't wire the other end of this cord, but uh, I'm hoping whoever did color coordinated right because this is labeled how it's supposed to be. So I took it up and find out. All right, so I got that roughed in the way it's supposed to be wired. I didn't get all fancy and put dielectric grease in it and finish it up yet because let's turn everything on and uh, see if it works. <laughs> it's not looking good, folks. It is not looking good. Looks like the uh, turn signal is definitely hooked up to the ground. Oh, fun, fun, fun. So we got going on back here. I think the, uh, we might just have two wires fixed switch. We have the brown and the turn. Stand by. Stand by. Oh, good golly. Nothing's ever easy. We're getting closer. We got marker lights. But uh, the right turn signal is going on the trailer and the left one is going on the truck. Uh, that could definitely confuse somebody and possibly be a violation. So it's official. There's not a single wire on this thing that is ran to the right color. So it's the old uh, trial and error method, but uh, we're getting there. We're getting there, folks. Look, we're getting closer. See how that one's flashing? Yeah. The same size flashing on the truck? Yeah. I'm going to go switch it and you see if the other side starts flashing. You ready? Yep, yep. Fingers crossed. Yep. Did it switch? Yeah. All right, good deal. Now let me hit the brakes and see if they stay stay solid, okay? Let's see if this works. Turned on and off. Yep. Yep. All right, good deal. Closing in and getting excited. All right, a little help from the kiddos. We got the wiring all done. <laughs> I had a feeling he ever wired the other half of this. He goes into some something something right here. 
Uh, maybe they're colorblind or maybe they didn't know any better, but uh, they definitely got some wires. I shouldn't say crossed. Wrong color going to the wrong place, but by golly, we got her figured out. So the next thing we need to do, which I think is the last thing on this connection, is I want to move this D-ring up a set of holes to level this trailer out a little bit. So I'm going to back up, disconnect, slide the ring up, reconnect, and uh, see how she looks. Check that out guys, all hitched up and ready to go. Got safety chains hooked up, electric hooked up, airlines hooked up, hill hitch hooked up. It's running just a little bit high in the front yet. It's hard to tell here sitting in the garage. There's a truck's on the garage floor nuts out there. But I think after some previous measurements I took, whenever this thing's loaded, I think it's gonna sit dead level, which is like ideal. So uh, yeah, hopefully that'll work out. So. Uh, I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of comments about me not crossing my safety chains never have never will That's all I'm gonna say about it. You guys can do whatever you want to that's the way I'm gonna do mine So uh, we'll leave that at that, but There's one. Hold on. I forgot my stuff. There's one There's one thing that I've been one not one I've been needing to do to this truck For almost a year year and a half and I always forget that it's in the shop and I have remembered now This is gonna make Officer Hoover, a very, very, very happy individual. But I have got the decals to put my name and DOT number on the door. For those of you guys that don't know, the actual name of my business is Simon's Concrete and Excavating LLC. Hence the excavating and the ICF work. And uh, yeah, well, the DOT number is boring. It's down there, but uh, let's get these on the get these on the door. Well guys, there she is. I believe she's ready for action, ready for the uh, first old trial run. I'm pretty happy with the way that's, uh, I'm pretty happy with the way that's sitting. It's definitely up in the front, maybe the length of the trailer, inch and a half, two inches, but I think as soon as we get a load on there, she's gonna run perfectly flat and uh, be right on the money, so. I don't know you guys have to stay tuned to uh see how she works i'm sure we'll have to do some tweaks on her here and there but uh all the lights are burning everything seems to be working still don't know how the hell this is gonna work out but uh that may be a winter project for man behind the scenes there but hot diggity dog definitely feel better about the way those glad hands are up there so I'm excited. Better tool in the arsenal. See how she works. So, 
Guys, hope you enjoyed the project. Stay tuned to see how she works. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, we shall catch you guys on the next one.